Hey guys, my name is Jesus Gomez, and this is my review for Bunraku, which I thought it was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed it overall. Um, according to critics, is it too hard to, you know, critique on it? You know, I think you should. I think you should be able to. But for me, I really liked it because it really was this artistic form style of genre that is rarely seen in film, it's, but but more often in theater, which I really liked. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I thought the fighting was awesome. The story, eh, there was moments where it kind of lost me, but overall I was able to follow. Kind of, I kind of was able to foreshadow the connection between the characters, the drifter and the big boss number one, and, and Yoshi's place. And but to me, I, I could have done a little more. But I think the purpose here wasn't so much the story, the narrative being told. I think it was the style in which things were performed. You know, you had the scenes of like uh, mountain ranges, the moon being bright. You had um, the trees, which if you if you stop it and show the trees, they're literally made out of paper. It was awesome. Like you had this theater feel, this presence in the film, which I really enjoyed. And I think that's what the film was aiming to do. Um, and the fighting was awesome. You know, it, it never never went to push itself more than just like a couple hits here and there. It wasn't trying to be like gory or like super bad. It was, I think it was really respectful and it really showed an art form. Um, yeah, so moving on to prompt number two, um, you know, the film mashup theater styles. You know, of, of course, from the beginning, we get the sense of Baraku puppetry taking place. We even get a glimpse of a, of a handful during um, when the police come out. You see strings hanging from the, from the puppets, which was pretty well done, pretty awesome. Um, you know, we get a little bit of film noir when, when it comes to, like, the gang members and their, their whole relationship to the community and what's going on. And especially as we try to figure out who the, 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 the leaders and the members of this gang is as it leads up to number, number one, the big boss. Um, and the samurai. The samurai, I think, was the biggest influence here, you know. Um, I, I felt like their narration in which it was told was centered around Yoshi and the Drifter, but in a world that's supposed to represent Japanese culture, Japanese style, and more importantly, Japanese theater. You know, I, I felt like there was a storyteller present explaining us the whole thing, telling us what the story was, telling us how these characters fit one another, which, why I keep going back to, I felt like it was, I was watching a theater production in a film. Um, the combat was awesome. You know, I felt like the people were people represented their styles well. Yoshi being a samurai was going to be really good with hand style and a sword, lance, and any type of weaponry that coexists with that style. Whereas the Drifter, I think he stayed true to his character, you know, was more of the brass knuckle, the hands, the fist, you know, wasn't wasn't trying to pull out a gun or anything, which I really enjoyed, by the way. You know, I, I, I got to stop right here and explain this. The uses of no guns in this world was really well done because it would have been an immediate cop out and I believe that it would the tension of having no guns present it, it's an easy cop out and more importantly it really highlights the style in which each member is combated even the man in the circus that was acrobatic and dancing on top of the the net you know it kind of reminded me of some of the Indian training that they did in in the theater that we studied in, in Indonesia but um yeah, no, I think it was really represented well, and I think it showed just different highlights of combat, comp style, acrobats, and mobility within actors and theater. Um, so yeah, it was really awesome. The narrator did a good job. I felt like he was in control the whole time. But um, the overall, I think when we looked at cultural appropriation and where it fits in this film, you know, I, I think the film tries really, really really hard to not offend anybody and people who are offended you know i can see why maybe if they pick on certain stereotypes but i felt like the characters themselves yoshi the drifter the gang members all stay true to their mold you know i think they were able to respect one another with the combat styles they use you know number two being a, a huge swordsman in his own right and take and fight yoshi in the blows and you know and even the woody harrison character you know never 
went out of his own. You know, he, he went out and fought with a baseball bat for for God's sakes. So, I think the I think the film shows a lot of missionary cultures, and it was done on purpose. I think it was to show how we can highlight great aspects of traditions and cultures and style within the film. And I thought it was well done. You know, it, the film didn't take it so seriously. It wasn't trying to be, you know, these Michael Bay films and explosions. I thought I'd just try to try to be a film that showed theater, showed aspects, showed style, techniques, and different different ways to tell a story without being over dramatic. Which I thought it was fun. And I think that's what the overall genre or the overall message of this week was that theater is meant to be clashing of, of cultures. We're supposed to be challenging aspects and looking into them and understanding them and sharing experiences because it's the only way we can ever get ahead. And I think this film does that. So, yeah. <laughs>